it's necessary if you want to be a designer to communicate in kind of different ways specifically uh, uh, drawing and sketching which is what we will do in this class is very very important uh, when you start working on a new idea for example and you don't really know uh, where where you will go or exactly what you will be but uh, one thing that you have to learn is that design is a process okay you don't just wake up in the morning and you already have that thing clear in your head you need to get there and one thing that you will learn in this class and in this uh, uh, college is something called design thinking design thinking is a way of thinking literally and it's a, also a process a step-by-step -step process that you need to apply every time you need to work on new ideas okay now if you are taking this class because 99% of designers, at least the good ones, <laughs> when they start working on something, they don't just jump on the computer or make a phone call or send an email. They sit down with a sketchbook and they start drawing something. Okay? Uh, I mean, my sketchbook is full of this stuff. I, uh, if I have time, I will put together some of my sketches to show you. Uh, how it works and how it looks like. Of course, it looks a little bit messy in the beginning, but that's how ideas are. Ideas in your head are a little bit messy, right? So when you, when you try to draw them on paper, what you are doing is that you are trying to clean up your head and putting something on paper is a little bit like telling yourself, this thing is real. Because now it's not in your head, now it's, you see it on paper. I know this sounds obvious, but if you think about it, it's the first step from, from having an idea to actually making something, okay? Now, if you, are, uh, if you do other jobs, maybe you don't really need this too much, although I personally believe that everybody, no matter what job you do, if you are thinking anything at all, not just designing a house or furniture, if you are thinking about something, having a piece of paper is a big, big help. That's why I told you yesterday, everybody should have a notebook. It's, it's your brain on paper, basically. And if you are not familiar with, I know that some of you, how, how many of you, actually, let's, let's ask this question. How many of you already use a sketchbook? Not every day, but, you know, from time to time you write down something or Raise your hands, how many of you? Okay, that's uh, a good 15%, 20? Okay, so if you're not familiar with this, uh, I'm basically pushing you to start using a sketchbook every day. Not later every day, but as much as you can in whatever you do, not just for the college or what you're doing here, for anything really, for your life. Write down things. You don't have to draw. I mean, although one thing that you will learn in this class is that drawing is about understanding. We will do a lot of that here. Drawing something, it helps you to understand what it is. Because drawing is a different way of communicating. It's a different way of speaking. Uh, it's, a, it's a language, as I said. And it's a very unique language. You need to remember that as, as human beings, we think in images, we don't think in words. When you are thinking about something, you don't see giant words flying around, milk, <laughs> house, house, no. When you think about these things, you think in pictures, basically. There's a, like a movie going on in your head, in our head. And that tells you something. That drawing is kind of a representation on paper of what's going on in your brain. The difference is that if something is going on in your brain, right, it's always going to be messy. It's always going to be 
mixed up with other stuff and other problems and other things that you are thinking about, nothing is really clear, right? Even when you dream, you can dream amazing creative stuff at night, but you don't really remember the details. You don't, like, you cannot stop and say, oh yeah, the house was blue and there was uh, three doors. And you don't remember that. It's always mixed up and very, very messy. Still very creative and interesting, but messy. Now, putting things on paper is a way to get out of this random craziness that is going on in your brain and trying to really visualize things in a more clear way. Now, sketching, drawing, uh, like I said, is important as a designer because it's the first step you take to develop any idea. Okay? I told you, when you need to talk to, talk to somebody, including yourself, about ideas, don't talk about it. Draw it. Just show, okay, I have this idea. So if you show an idea to somebody on a piece of paper, they will understand what you're saying. You just did it now. When I look at your paper, I want to cry, but at the same time, <laughs> at the same time, I'm like, but I do understand what you're trying to say, right? I recognize, and you didn't tell me anything, I just look at your paper, but I get it, right? So remember to burn this paper later. Um, <laughs> so, no, no don't, don't, don't ever talk about this again. Um, so, we are trying to learn how to represent ideas on paper. This is what is this class about. Okay? Uh, I noticed some of you no, I don't know that anymore after I see your paper. Some of you can draw something. And uh, most of you have a long road in front of you. Very long, super long. But the good news is that no matter where you are today, you will have a chance to get better. There is no question about that. You will get better. Now, how far you can go, it really depends from how much work and how much practice you decide to put into it. Some of you might think that drawing is not important. Well, let me tell you that this. Most of you, when you were a child, you used to draw, right? Anybody didn't draw? Anybody? No. And some of you probably were actually good at doing that. Some of you don't even remember that anymore. Now, you see, the problem here is that most of people grow up, stop drawing because life happens, and they think they cannot draw anymore. They basically say, I cannot draw. I, I don't draw, I, I cannot draw. That's it, I'm done with it. And most people also believe that drawing is for children. <laughs> It's something that you know children do. <laughs> Those children. And I'm like, why do you get this idea? Who told you this? Children or designers or artists, right? People think that drawing is something that you have to be an artist to do, which is completely nonsense. Who stop, stops you from drawing? Somebody, uh, I don't know, told you if you draw something, we're gonna kill you. No. Everybody can draw. The only problem with most people is that you grow up and you stop drawing. And of course, if you don't draw, if you don't practice, right, what happens is that you don't, you stop uh, being good at it. You don't, you don't know how to do it anymore. It's a little bit like driving. It's a little bit like swimming. It's a little bit like exercising. <laughs> if you don't exercise for a very long time and then you go to the gym for 30 minutes, what happens? What happens? I know you've done this, come on. You don't exercise for a very long time. And then you go to the gym. What happens after <laughs> you go to the gym? Pain. Pain, yeah, it's painful. 
or your whole body is like, what the hell are you doing? You feel pain everywhere. Your body is complaining, basically. Now, you already know that if you start exercising, you know, every week, your body will stop complaining. You will get stronger, you will get better, and eventually, you will get in a good shape too. Guess what? But, that's a good example of what practice means, and you can apply the same thinking to anything, really. If you stop doing something and you don't do it for a very long time, obviously, you forget about it. You don't know how to do it anymore. Even driving, if you don't drive for a very long time, and then one day, somebody asks you, oh, can you drive me home? I mean, that one would never do that, but what happens is that you are really, is you're gonna struggle a lot, maybe you're gonna crash into something. Because you lost, you're not used to it anymore. And withdrawing is exactly the same. So, again, I told you this yesterday. Uh, if you're serious about it, and if you really want to get in good shape, you need to practice a lot. If I give you, I mean, we're gonna do a lot of exercises here, but when you go home, feel free to keep drawing other stuff. Uh, it doesn't hurt you. If I give you, if I teach you something, go home and do it like 10 times. Over and over and over again. Nobody gets good at anything, really, without practice. No one. I don't know anybody who is good at anything who doesn't practice. You need to practice all the time. Now, of course I'm not asking you to draw every day for six hours. But, you know, in between not drawing ever and drawing for six hours, there's a middle way, right? You can find a middle way for 10 minutes, maybe, every day, draw something. If you don't know what to draw, well, easy. There is something called, you can Google this, uh, there are drawing challenges. I used to do drawing challenges with my friends. For 30 days, you can either make a list or find a list online. Every day, you can draw something. Whatever that is, it doesn't really matter. But it keeps you going, okay? You can do this challenge in between all of you. You can, just an idea, you don't have to do it, just an idea. You can start a line group that is called the Drawing Challenge. And every day, there's a theme, a topic, just like we did today. And all of you have to do one little sketch and share it in the group. That's it. So you're all checking on each other, basically, but everybody's posting something instead of, you know, posting pictures of your food, or where you go to eat, selfies with your friends. You might do something actually useful for you. So I challenge you to challenge yourself. Just saying, you don't have to do it. I'm just suggesting you things to do. Um, now, drawing, on top of everything I just told you, goes a long, long way back. And if you don't believe me that drawing is such a kind of a human, essential thing that we do, think about this. Uh, thousands of years ago, our ancestors, right, people hunting, running around in the forest, killing animals. They didn't you know, have smartphones or uh, uh, chit chat on Facebook or go boating or something like that. They were really wild, okay? Living in the wild. But not as wild as you think. Have you ever heard or seen or not about cave paintings. Have you ever heard about cave paintings? There is a beautiful, beautiful documentary uh, a few years ago, a famous director did about cave paintings in uh, South France, I think. 
since I was a child and I saw for the first time his painting, I was blown away. Why? Well, anybody knows how old are these paintings? Nick Noy? Wow, okay, that's, uh, calm down, my friend, calm down. 350,000, no. <laughs> Anybody else wants to guess? What? No, calm down to you too. Calm down. Huh? 40,000, you're getting closer. Okay, now it's becoming an ocean. Everybody's like, 5,000, no, I want 5,000. In 1940, this is a, a cave in southern France, um, has been calculated that these paintings are 20,000 years old. Now think for a moment about that number, 20,000 years old, okay? 20,000 years ago, a bunch of cave people running around, killing animals, sleeping, waking up in the morning, I'm hungry. Oh, let's kill somebody. No, not somebody, some animals. Uh, <laughs> living in tribes, right? Burning fires. Wild, basically, human beings. These human beings, by the way, don't look at them as if they are wild animals. They are our ancestors. Okay, so never forget that. That's where we come from. That's where we come from, all of us. Um, what is really blowing my mind when I saw these things, it was like, you know what? You cannot open it. Again, just think for a moment that these people 20,000 years ago did this. They barely knew how to talk to each other, they didn't really have a proper language as well. But they could do this. So when I told you before that drawing is a language, now you understand what I mean. Anybody just again for a second, anybody can tell me what they are trying to say on these walls in this cave. What is the message? Because I guess they are sending a message, right? They are expressing themselves. What do you see on the walls to begin with? Time, animals. Why do you think these people are drawing animals? Fear. What? Fear. Fear. That's what you said? Yes. Okay, anybody else? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> people, what's the problem? <laughs> Food, fear. What's it? I need to use the line. Uh, allow, allow this animal. Like, the life around these animals, okay? Anybody else wants to try? Why are they drawing this? They can draw anything, right? Obviously they can draw. <laughs> we know that. They could draw anything they want to. Why did they choose to draw the animals? Life form. Uh, I mean, you are all right in one way or another. So I'm gonna put this down differently, but it's pretty much what you said. Like I said, these people spent most of their days hunting, and this is a matter of life and death, right? They didn't live in a, in a fancy house uh, with a swimming pool and, uh, you know, and going to 7 Eleven to buy a couple of uh, sausages. <laughs> right? We are talking about very wild people here, living in the forest, always trying to survive, basically. But what is mind-blowing to me is that when they draw this animal, what they're drawing, really, is one of the most important things in their life. 
they are trying to represent not just food. <laughs> it's not what you did now that you're drawing a burger or a pizza on your thing. It's not the same thing. Because they didn't buy these things at the supermarket. They had to risk their lives to eat, get food, and survive another day. It's a little bit different. I understand it for you and for me, obviously. It's a little bit difficult to understand the kind of lives these people had. But try to put yourself in the minds of this bunch of people that took the time to draw and communicate something. Of course, they didn't really thought about the fact that 20,000 years later, a bunch of people like us will be looking at these beautiful uh, paintings. But here we are, 20,000 years later, they communicate to us. And what they're saying is, we are drawing these animals because we respect them. Because they represent a very important thing in our lives. In other words, they are using drawing as a language to communicate how they feel. They are communicating feelings, they are communicating ideas, right? And that's a little bit what we all do when we draw something. So drawing is powerful. So powerful, in fact, that 20,000 years later, we're still talking about it. This is not a movie. This is not a YouTube video, right? It's a powerful message. This is real communication. Drawing is communicating what's going on inside of you. Now, if you if you still think that drawing is for children, all right? Uh, I hope now you are changing your mind. Children communicate through drawing? Of course they do. We all do. We all did, at least. But you need to understand that that's very human. That's what makes us human in a way. Before language, before uh, uh, writing, there was drawing. It was there before anything else. Right? And these people are telling you, pretty much, you need to draw because you need to express yourself. So that's what you need to do when you draw something. And that's important, I believe, at least uh, in my opinion, uh, for everybody. It's not just for you as because you are becoming a designer. Of course, for us, it's a powerful tool that we need to use because we will design something, and without drawing, uh, you can it cannot really express your ideas that much. Sure, you will use computers, you will use other tools, but think about this for a moment. If you don't know how to draw or to express your ideas right away, and ideas, of course, are messy and they come and go. Drawing is the fastest way I know to really start getting things real on paper outside of your head, okay? So the next time you draw something, think about these people, what they did, and what they were communicating, okay? And then Matisse said, drawing is putting a line around an idea, which is what I said in millions of ways already, uh, it is what we do. Just a few basic stuff. Obviously, the number one element of drawing is a piece of paper, right? Uh, in your case, we are very much focused on this imprecise sketchbook. I said this before, take care of the sketchbook, okay? Because all the things that we do in the class are part of the final grade, basically. So this is like a document, an official document for you, for your work. Please also put your name on the cover. You can be creative, you can come up with a, you can design a cover, that would be nice. Uh, I'll put your name on it, okay? So, holding a pencil, 
Let me teach you how correctly hold a pencil. And if you don't do that, I'm gonna fail you. I'm joking, I don't care about how you hold a pencil. I'm not teaching you that. If you hold a pencil like this, like that, or like this, like that, I don't really care how you hold a pencil. Yes, I will teach you later how to do some specific techniques, but uh, whatever you feel comfortable. I think you are old enough to know how to hold a pencil by now. If you are not, we'll see a psychologist. Um, so, holding a pencil. By the way, one thing that we, I will often tell you is that uh, one technique that you will learn is to quickly sketch something, just a general outline, and then work on the details later. This is a basic technique that all designers know. When you draw something, I told you before, you need to be confident. But at the same time, you need to be quick to put on paper as quickly as you can what's going on in your head. For many of you, that's going to be hard. Why? Because you worry about the fact that you're going to make a mistake, that the line is not straight enough, and uh, I don't like it. That's why sometimes I'll ask you to draw with a pen. Because when you draw with a pen, you can't worry about that anymore. You just have to keep drawing. Uh, when you draw with a pencil, the good thing about drawing with a pencil is that you can actually be gentle, light with your touch. So the lines are very, very light. You start seeing something, it's a little bit blurry basically, but it's not clear. It's there, but it's not very clear and you can work on that later step by step, okay? You can do that with a pencil and you should do that with a pencil. Not because you have to erase it later, but because it's like you can literally see an idea growing. Uh, for most of exercise, I will do a demo, which means that I will sit among you and sketch it and show you how it's done. So you can see right in front of your eyes uh, how it works, okay? So, we will go through all of this. Drawings can be two-dimensional, flat, they usually are, but also you can express perspective in drawings, meaning that you can see things in three dimensions. One of the most difficult things that you will learn in this class is to draw interiors perspective. If you're an interior designer and you don't know how to do that, not really a good interior designer, Sure, you can do a 3D in some software. Yeah, my nephew can do that. You need to learn how to visualize on paper with a pencil an interior, a space. Interior design is all about space. If you don't have the space in your head and therefore on paper, what kind of designer are you? Right? I would never trust somebody who doesn't know how to draw an interior on a piece of paper. Why? Because if I'm talking to a client and I have an idea, right, I don't have to say, oh, wait here, I need six hours to go back and, you know, do a 3D model and then do the renderings and then come back to you. I'm like, what? You have an idea, you sketch it on paper right in front of the client. People understand perspective better than they understand floor plans and sections and elevations. Why? Because they are technical. Why do you think, I'm sorry that I talk about this again. Why do you think when you are building your Ikea stool or whatever you're building, the drawings are not flat? Did you notice that? They are three-dimensional. Why? <laughs> Six seconds ago. Why they are three dimensional? Yeah, everybody gets them. Everybody can understand them. If they drew like sections and top view and I'm like, most people will not get it. They draw actually three dimensional the instructions because everybody gets them. Right? So you will learn that. We will get there. We will learn perspective. 
representing a space on a piece of paper, coloring it, giving it life, materials, all of that. So, this is what I want you to do. This is a, literally a warm up exercise. This is your A3 size paper, okay? What I want you to do is to divide it in four equal parts. Just two lines like this. That's it. Go ahead. Let's start with the first one. Very simple. Do your best. Of course, no judgment. Do your best. You need to draw straight lines. Straight lines, wait, no, it's not that simple. And in between each line, you need to have the same space. So, you have to draw straight lines and make sure that there is always the same space in between them. Do your best. My advice is that when you do these things, don't stop in the middle thinking about, you know, your ex or something you need to post on Twitter. Just go for it. Let your, oh wait, one more advice. Oh my gosh, you only did one line. Take your time. I'm joking, obviously. So one thing that uh, you will learn is that because you are right-handed, sorry, um, many times you will have to adjust your paper. So feel free to kind of move your paper around. You can, you have to rotate. It. Also, if you're drawing with this thing flapping around, that's very annoying. So just put it down. Make sure that you are very, very comfortable. You need to relax when you do this. So relax your shoulder. We're going to do a little bit of, you know, yoga. No, it's not yoga. Whatever that is. Relax your shoulders, right? You need to be comfortable when you draw. And in freehand drawing, you are free to move your paper around if you need to. Also, especially now that you are doing straight lines, uh, because you have an elbow, right? See, if you do this, it's a little bit difficult, but if you do this, it's a little bit easier. So you might have to turn around your sketch room to get a better feeling. You need to, there is no right or wrong way to do this. You need to find your most comfortable position. 